G'day folks, and welcome back to the channel for the start of a new series of Grim Dawn. Several days ago, I put up a poll asking what build you wanted to see next, and the winner, by more than the next two builds combined, was an Acid Retaliation Sentinel. I do want to state right at the start here, this build is going to be farming three different full blue sets from totems. If you don't want to spend a decent amount of time farming totems while leveling, this build is not one you're going to want to follow. We're also going to be doing a full respec of the character at level 40, so if you're not okay with learning how to play your character a second time, this build again may not be for you. I just want to say again, this is a build all about farming while leveling. If you're trying to speedrun the campaign, this ain't the build for you. This will, however, be the third time I've made this build, the first two being in the Season 5 mod, so I kind of know what I'm doing. And third time's a charm. Right, so with that out of the way, Retaliation, or Thorn's Damage as it's called in some other games, is the dream for a lot of players in many ARPGs. And I say it's the dream because generally you're dreaming if you think it's going to work. In Grim Dawn though, it not only works, but it works pretty well. Retaliation is no longer the superpowered auto win build that it used to be, but it is fairly strong still. There are multiple flavors of it as well. You can do fire, you can do lightning, you can do physical. Um, we are going to be doing acid. And there are three ways to level a retaliation build. There's the smart way, where you level with something else entirely, get to level 94, and then you equip a full set of gear that you farmed on another character. There's the halfway, where you get to level 40, you equip the perdition set that you once again farmed on another character. And then there's the fun way, which is where you start with Oathkeeper, put one point into an attack skill, max out Presence of Virtue early, get Isaac Spaulders, stack gear with retaliation damage on it, and you slowly work your way through the game, letting the zombies ragdoll themselves off your spiky armor. Adding to the confusion of retaliation builds, there are two major groups that I just made up on the spot. The first style is the old style, where you kind of walk around and get hit while returning damage and not really doing much on your own, where you attempt to outlast everything and you will struggle to kill mages and ranged attackers. Then there's the retaliation added to attack types, which is what we're going to be doing, where you take all that retaliation damage on your gear and your devotions, you stuff it into an attack, and then you go smack things about with it. Um, in patch 1.2, the drop rate on epic or blue items was boosted way up on totems, so it's now viable to farm the perdition set on the character you're planning on using it on. And so we're going to be doing a modified halfway run of the more active retaliation added to attack version of this archetype. The plan is to make ourselves a fresh start character and level to about level 38 with not retaliation, ensuring that the first three acts don't take 10 hours to complete. No, I'm not joking, I've, I've done the fun way before. It's painfully slow. It is fun though, and it's quite challenging. Um, then around level 38, we're going to stop progressing the story and we will focus full time on farming a perdition set. We're going to do this again at level 58 and then at level 94, instead of farming our set or potentially as well as farming our set, we are going to go shopping and we're going to straight up buy our level 94 set from a merchant. Now it's a little bit more involved than that, but that's kind of the plan. So, like I said, we're getting to 38 with not retaliation. And if you want to play pets, you go play pets. If you want to play a vitality caster, go play vitality caster. We are being uh, playing as a sentinel, so the occultist and the oathkeeper can both do vitality. The occultist can do pets just by itself. Um, but find some way of getting to level 38 especially if you're watching this as it comes out and you want to push on ahead, um, get a build, go to level 38, you'll be fine. However, I'm going to take this opportunity to shout out Arcade Life, who has a video series on his channel about a one-shot occultist that uses Drig's Evil Eye as a massive nuke with a huge dot attached to it to kill bosses in 
You guessed it, one shot. I'm going to be doing a modified version of that build to get me to level 38. Now, Arcade Life and I differ on how we level, uh, but it's just another take on that build. And if you prefer to do things a different way, um, or like I said, if you want to keep playing ahead of me, go watch Arcade Life's videos and just wait for me to catch up at level 38. So with that massive intro done, let's go ahead and make a character and get rolling. Now you can call your character or whatever you like. Uh, I'm going to be very imaginative and call my female character Hydrochlorina. And then we've got these two little buttons down here that I want to have a little spiel about as well. Hardcore is completely optional. Um, unless you are trying specifically to get the hardcore achievements, you don't need this on. Nothing else changes. The only thing that changes is you'll be locked out of the hardcore achievements and your character will not be effectively deleted if it dies. So with hardcore on, death is permanent as it says there. I've had several comments on my earlier series where I didn't make this quite so clear at the start, saying things like, I died and now I can't enter the game, my character looks like a ghost, what's going on? This is what's going on. If you have hardcore on and you die, your character cannot be played anymore. So if that doesn't sound like something you want to deal with, then go ahead and turn it off and everything will still be the same. Veteran is a little, a little bit more complicated. Now, I prefer to play on Veteran or with Veteran turned on. If you don't prefer to play Veteran, if you don't want the stress of the added challenge, if you just want to relax after work with a beer in one hand and play with your other hand, turn it off. Nobody's going to know. Nobody should care. Do whatever makes you happy. For me, I prefer the extra challenge on Veteran. I prefer the extra risk on Hardcore. And um, it's up to you which way you want to go. Uh, male or female makes no difference. And obviously your name makes no difference either. So with that said, let's get underway. Now, as with all of my series, this is going to be a fresh start. So we will be starting with nothing in the bank, uh, no iron bits, no blueprints, no components, nothing at all. We are fresh start as if we had just bought the game and installed it for the very first time. Now uh, on the keyboard, you have the less than greater than symbols. You can spin the camera, spin it up here and grab this note. And then number pad two followed by number pad three will reset it back to the default. This little note here will give you 50 XP, which is 50 60 ninths of the first level. So go ahead and grab it. That'll be most of your first level done. Before we cross the bridge and go and bash some things with our stick, there are a couple of configuration things that I want to point out. First thing is your tonic of mending here and your tonic or, or your elixir of spirit rather. These are your health and energy potions. They will have a hot key assigned to them. Make sure you know what these are. You will need them. Um, also, evade. I believe the default here is space. I have it on mouse four. You can use this for movement or for dodging, let's say, important abilities later on. Um, but there's a few others I want to go into. So in key bindings in the menu here, there's a couple I really want to call out. Firstly, I have my potions here on E and Q. Uh, I think they're on 9 and 0 by default. I could be wrong. I haven't played default settings since 1.2 where they changed from being 9 and 0 to being over here. So they may no longer be there. Just make sure you know where they are and you can find them. Uh, next thing is pickup. I believe by default this is not bound. Make sure it's bound. Um, I'm using R because it's just convenient for where my hand sits when I play. Uh, but make sure it's somewhere that's, like I said, comfortable, convenient to use because this will save you from clicking on every single item you want to pick up. And there's going to be a lot of items. So this will just pick up whatever item is standing or is close to where you are standing. You definitely want to have this bound. It will save your mouse finger a ton of clicks. Um, evade here, like I said, mine's on mouse four. Put it wherever you like. Just make sure you know where it is. You will need this later. And then the last thing I'm going to point out here is toggle hide all items here. This is for your loot filter. Um, if you push it, you'll see items hidden. 
And then if you throw an item on the floor, you can't see it. And then you push it again, you can see it. Push it again, it, you can't see it. You can't pick it up unless you can see the icon there. So, uh, that was a white item. And we're going to filter those out. So if you open the loot filter, we're going to turn common items off. I'm going to check always show double rares. I don't know why this isn't set to on, but make sure it's on. Um, and I've had a few comments on previous series as well about this. You absolutely can leave white items on until you have something in every slot. Not this one, not this one, but every armor slot, all your weapons, jewelry, all that sort of stuff. You could do that. And it's honestly probably optimal to do that, uh, but there's going to be enough magic and rare items dropping very, very early that you won't really notice it. Now, sometimes the bridge is going to be empty. Sometimes you'll get a soldier and three zombies. It's just down to whatever happens to be here. But this body at the end always has a magical item. Now, this is ridiculously lucky. Generally speaking, you'll get a helmet with a magical affix that you can't use, or maybe a, a weapon that's no good. Um, I've really lucked out, and I've got a decent weapon. However, if you did not luck out... Oh, while I'm thinking about it too, this little uh, yellow triangle will make your mini-map in the top corner bigger. Um, if you did not get a fancy yellow weapon like I did, you can follow the right-hand side of the map here, and assuming this rock is not here, which obviously it is for me, I'll show you the other side of that rock. I'm going to have to go around it. Um, this acid as well will kill you way faster than you think it will. So just be aware if you're standing in it, make sure you have a potion available. Also, yes, I know I got a level up. Um, I'm talking about other stuff at the moment. I'll, I'll get to it, I promise. We're going to be mostly auto-attacking for a little bit here anyway. So because there's a rock in the road, I have to go around this way. And I'm just going to let the zombies and the uh, Rift Scourge here fight it out. Except this guy who decided to stay home. Um, this body here, every single game will have Hevel's Greatsword in it. Uh, this is one of the set item drops in the first area. It is always in this house, it is always on this body, and it is always a good starting weapon. For every build you're playing. Um, there are other starting weapons if you wish to use them. Uh, this one looks like it's, well, plus zero damage per second if equipped. But you can check here. It looks like it does more damage. Maybe it's a bit slower. I'm going to use this just because I don't know that you can... Well, I'm, I'm pretty sure you will not have that axe. So I'll just use this one. Uh, also, did hit level 2, about to be level 3, so let's go through that. We're going to be putting points into Spirit. Um, Arcade Life's build uses 10 points in Spirit and then all Physique. I'm going to do 5 and then Physique, and then I'll probably put more points in Spirit later. But for now, 5, just so I can start getting some points in Physique. As for our class, we will be starting with Occultist. And... There's two ways to do this, okay? The way Arcade Life does it, and there's nothing wrong with this version, is you put one point in Dreg's Evil Eye, and then you max out Blood Burst. The idea being, Blood Burst does not increase the energy cost of Dreg's Evil Eye, but putting more points into Dreg's Evil Eye does increase the energy cost of the spell. Now, his video was from before 1.2, when energy potions were an item you had to have in your inventory, and you could run out of them. Now, energy potions are infinite, and they're gated only by the 25 second skill recharge. So, in my opinion, it's better to put the points into Dreg's Evil Eye early. At least go up to maybe 6 to 8 points, and then start moving down the line. But whichever way you prefer to go, just do that. It'll be fine. If you start noticing you're running out of energy and you don't want to mess with energy potions, take some points out. You can respec in town. It costs you a little bit of uh, a little bit of iron bits, and and that's it. So don't stress about it. Not a big deal. Try both methods. Maybe you'll like it. Um, 
I like doing one point in the bar, two points in the skill for just about every character I play. But uh, your mileage probably will vary. It's just going to come down to personal preference and how much you care about having to use or not use energy potions. For me, not a big deal. I'm happy to spam them. Okay, level three. Um, nope, just the level three skill point, uh, which is going into spirit here. Also, I picked up a yellow chest here. It does have some acid and poison damage on it. Um, ignore those while you're leveling. 6% acid damage. Look at my Dreg's evil eye. Goes up six points. Who cares? It's nothing. <laughs> um, you want to focus on resistances, on stats, on uh, regeneration early on. Later, when you're getting, you know, 100% increased acid damage yeah but sure absolutely grab those it's going to be great but early on six percent acid damage it's nothing just pretend that line doesn't exist when you're alan when you're evaluating your gear so we go into this house we're going to pick up these two notes and don't forget to bust open this um what do you even call that wardrobe we'll call it a wardrobe i think it's a set of shelves but whatever don't forget to bust it open, you could get a law note out of it, and law notes, as you can see, are a decent chunk of XP. Now, whether you go across this bridge or across this bridge, we will be coming back over this way anyway, because we have to rescue Faldus. And Faldus is a decent chunk of XP and some Devil's Crossing reputation for us, so we absolutely want to kill him. Or, no, we don't want to kill him, we want to rescue him. <laughs> uh, when you talk to him... You can put your mouse at the bottom of the top option and just click a bunch of times and you'll send him back to town. Also, don't forget to use evade to just speed up your movement. I'm going to forget a lot. I don't know why. I use it all the time in my higher level characters. But as soon as I don't have a movement skill, like an actual run across a screen skill, I forget that evade exists for some reason. I have no idea why. Probably senility, or just idiocy, <laughs> depending on which way you want to go. Okay, again, we're going up to five points in spirit here. Um, so more points in spirit, and one point in a bar, two points in here. Now, I want level five before I go and fight Kaizog. Um, no particular reason, it's just something I prefer to do. You get a few extra stats, you get two extra skill points in your main attack. Um... Or you get two more points, or three more points towards the next point in Bloodburst, if that's the way you're going to be doing it. But either way, you get more damage, you get more stats. It's all good stuff. Once we've killed Kaizog, then we'll be getting a decent chunk of points in... Is it Blood Pact? I never remember what it's called. Bloodburst, there we go. Uh, because that does make the Driggs Evil Eye into an AoE. Um, for me, I think getting the extra points in the base skill early is good for killing bosses. And if you're playing on veteran like I am, you will need the damage for bosses early. And you can always just take a little bit longer to kill um, packs, if you will. Most melee characters don't start with an AoE skill, so you'll just be doing this. And um, Drig's Evil Eye is basically this, but ranged. Okay, so we are going to get level 5, there it is. If you don't have level 5, don't stress, it's not the end of the world. You'll probably get a little bit more XP, in, well, you'll definitely get more XP inside before you have to worry about Kaizog. Um, what are we up to? 16 energy cost. I am going to take one point in Blood Burst now. And let's just check our gear before we go in. It could be worth putting a um, component on your belt if you have one. The scavenge plating here adds 15 armor to every slot you have something in. So these pants are now 27 armor because of that. Or actually they'll be 30 because the belt itself is 3 armor as well. Um, and same with the, the chest piece. You get all of the value of the armor in your belt. In my case it's 18. Added to these slots... So boots, gloves, shoulders, 
helmet, chest, and legs. If you don't have shoulders, your armor rating for your shoulder slot is zero. I know it says you have 18 armor on your shoulder. It's a lie. If your armor absorption column says 0%, then you don't have any armor on that slot. Um, I will explain armor later, once we have uh, a few more things to talk about with it. Uh, probably the end of Act 1, but for now, more armor is good. Armor and stats and, uh, and life and such is what you want to be aiming for. You can hit these Aether Crystals from up here. You may have to move a few times to find a gap in the invisible wall, but I promise you, you can kill both of these, there we go, from up here. You can also, if you're that way inclined, come over here, spin the camera around, and you can lob grenades down at things below you. I unfortunately don't have a huge amount of stuff down here to throw at, but uh, you, can, you can get a little bit of extra XP doing that if you want to. It's kind of a waste of time, but you can do it. Okay, Kaizok, in Veteran, find this guy, the Rotting Soldier. Kill him first. Any other Rotting Soldiers, there shouldn't be any, but if there are, kill them first. And then after that, kill off all of his friends. Don't worry so much about doing damage to Kaizog himself at this point. He will summon additional reinforcements. Um, go ahead and kill them. And then your mission is just run around, and you don't have to run around, you can stand right in his face and hit him with the sword. But stay out of the green pools, and keep his friends under control. So the way you die in this fight, is uh, you get slowly worn down by him summoning a million friends, or by you standing in the goop. So just run around, throw eyeballs at him. Use your left click if you want, whatever you prefer. He will drop his skull here. Now, this one's got frostbite on it, so it's not great. But if you wanted to, you could swap to a one-hander and this. I probably will. Um, the two-hander does have more damage. However, you're only getting a very small amount. So I'm only getting two to three main hand damage added to my skill. This will be more later, um, but we'll be using a one-hander for most of this build. So points in spirit again. First five into spirit, or ten if you're following Arcade Life's version of this build. And then the rest into physique. Okay, I've just picked up a copper band of mending. This is a really nice ring for early levels. I'm going to go ahead and chuck a polished emerald on it just to get some extra stats. Um, anything with of mending is very, very powerful early on. Less so later, but early, this is really, really nice. So if you get one, make sure you use it. Um, I'd love to wear those boots, unfortunately. I don't have the physique for it just yet, so that's fine. And that's more or less doesn't matter, honestly. All right. Let's get out of here. We are done. Did I grab the devotion point? I did. Uh, we are taking the red point here on the crossroads and we will be going for the rat first. That's going to be our first constellation giving us some bonuses to poison stuff. Right. We want to go out the door we did not come in through. Do be careful in this section, especially if you're playing on Veteran, there are quite often large packs of the eyeballs, or there's some fire mages there that will explode when you kill them, so make sure you're not standing close to uh, three or four of them and you don't blow yourself up. Okay, we are looking for Pusquil here. Now, I'm actually going to recommend not fighting Pusquil until level 10, or until sort of halfway through Act 1. And the reason why is that he really, really hurts when you're playing on Veteran. Um, one or maybe two mistakes and you're dead. So because I'm playing on Veteran and also on Hardcore, I'm going to skip him and I'll come back later and kill him then. It's up to you if you want to go hunt him down now. If you're playing on Normal, you'll have no trouble with him. Same with this Pharos the Rotted guy, he's not particularly dangerous unless you stand in that. 
that one attack is the only thing you have to worry about with him. So when he does... Well, he was about to do it, I think. But he'll shoot out three or four balls at the same time. If you get shotgunned by that, uh, it's going to hurt. And uh, if you get shotgunned by it twice, you're probably dead. Right. Spirit, fifth point. We're good to go there. I am going to continue putting at least one point in the bar here. Now, I'm up to six points. I'm level six. I've actually only had five level ups. So one of my levels, I put two points in here. And I'm just going to gradually level this whole line up. One point here, two points in one of these. I'll level this whole line up until we have all of it. And then we'll maybe look at possession after that and Blood of Drig and other nice things. But uh, Drig's Evil Eye is what we are doing first. No new items, unfortunately. So when you're fighting Pusquil, or when you're looking for Pusquil, just go in... Um, Go ahead and kill him. You can line of sight all of his attacks except for the water spray, I guess you call it. It's it's more of a slow moving wave. Uh, you can't line of sight that behind obstacles. It will go through them. However, if you find a large enough obstacle, it will run out of range before it gets through the obstacle and you can kind of sort of dodge it like that. Um, he will also whip his tail at you and shoot spikes, and that is what you need to dodge. Um, that attack hurts like you wouldn't believe, especially on Veteran. And if you take two of those, or even one of those when you're not at full health, you're probably dead. Okay, so we're killing Slith here, and specifically I'm after the blue ones. The Shaman because they have these necklaces, and I want three of those. If you happen to get more, it's fine, hang on to them. Uh, you can do the quest that needs them in Elite, and you'll have to find less of them, or in uh, in Ultimate. Um, are you actually full, or are you just really bad at stacking your inventory? I think we all know the answer to that. Um, let's go ahead and kill this other blue guy here. So yes, Drig's Evil Eye has a lot of really nice MIs, or Monster Infrequent items, in Act 1, and we're going to be using a lot of them. Now, there is one that is going to be a little bit iffy, uh, and it's a little bit iffy because it's actually quite hard to get it to drop. So I'm going to recommend it, but keep in mind we're only really using this build until level 40, so if you don't want to spend the time farming it, it's going to be fine to skip it. And that's going to be the same for, well, I won't say everything in this. You're going to be farming if you're playing along. But um, some of the things that I'm going to farm are maybe a little bit too much. And uh, it's up to you to decide for some of those whether you're going to farm them. Now, a lot of them are going to be build enabling kind of items, and uh, you're, you're going to have to farm those. But specific affixes on things, you're not going to have to farm that. As with all builds ever in this game, you don't need to find the exact affixes on the items. You just need to have the right item and, you know, something along the right lines for the affixes. As long as your resistances are maxed, it's probably fine if you have 50 lefts offensive ability or something like that. He should be dead. There he goes. Alright, so the White Mire Rift. This is the Rotting Soldiers again, and also now Ember Soldiers, or Ember Guard, I think they're called. Um, when they run at you, they'll have that big white cloud around them. You don't want to get hit by that. Uh, it's a lot of damage. We have to, we're up to five now, so we can start putting points into Spirit, or into Physique, rather. And I'm looking at these gloves... I'm looking at these boots, and I kind of want to wear them. Um, let's see. I don't think anything else here really matters. I am full. My inventory is definitely full, so I'll be going back to town to empty it out here. But uh, let's just grab another necklace first. Okay, that'll do. Now, you can just open your map and click on the rift you want to go to. You don't have to press... Um, where is it actually? Where's the button for your rift? This one here. You don't have to press that, you don't have to press L. You can just open the map and click where you want to go. Uh, 
Um, I did, however, just kind of mess myself up there. That's fine. I'm going to go through and turn in all the quests here. It's good XP. Um, it's good skill points P. Okay. Um, click the wrong option there. You can basically just spam the bottom option and then click the, uh, the tick at the end there. So he gave me one skill point. Uh, I also just hit level 7 not long ago. So one point in the bar. One there, two there. That'll do me. Let's go ahead and sell all of this. Now our merchant here is Carrick. Uh, at least for now, he will do. I'm going to hang on to those. And I'm going to sell everything else. I don't want any of this. You can look for items here. Um, if you find a copper band of mending, maybe buy it. Um, I wouldn't buy it if I had one ring. So if I find one, I'm not going to buy another one because once you have three of these necklaces, you can go and turn them in for a rare ring. So, so don't buy another one. But if you have two empty rings, maybe. Uh, we do want to do a decent amount of crafting at the end of Act 1. And so we will need a good chunk of iron bits at that point. Also, don't forget Sedina up here in the back corner. Sedina has 100 XP for you if you just talk to her and walk away. 100 XP now is about 10% of the level, something like that. Um, but later on, at the end of Act 1, when you're level 20 or so, 100 XP is going to be nothing. So get it now, take advantage of it. And uh, let's have a look here. I think we're good to go. Now, I did just clear my rift out here, so I'm going to have to go back to the Whitemire rift, but it wasn't that far away anyway, so it'll be fine. Let's uh, get a little bit of a little evasion going on here. Um, that sounds like Slith. Looks like Slith too, so no blue ones there, unfortunately. Make sure you're picking up all of these components. Uh, all of them. We need every single component. I mean, you'll accidentally pick up most of them anyway. Uh, the salt bag here is used for a level 100 quest in ultimate difficulty only. You can get another one by making a new character, taking it off and putting it into your shared stash. Just toss it. Um, as soon as you get any kind of uh, any kind of amulet drop, this one is not great, but you know what? It's better than 5% less damage from one type of enemy. Okay, level 8. One point in the bar. I think I'm going to bring Blood Burst up a little bit more. This is adding more damage to the main attack um, and also the splash, so this is decent. I just wanted that uh, early boost in damage on Drig's Evil Eye there to take care of Kaislog, because otherwise you're going to be left clicking him like this, and believe me when I say that's painful. Or just play on normal difficulty and, and walk over him like he's not there. <laughs> that's also an option. You go away, you go away. Okay, in the White Mire, there are three colored zombies. Now, I know how that sounds, but let me finish. Okay, they are shiny silvery blue zombie. They are green zombie, who we already killed back down here in this house. That was Faris the Rotted. And then it's going to be fire zombie further up the road. So Lightning Zombie Dude, when he puts up that Lightning Storm, if you're standing next to him, you'll take Lightning Damage. I know it sounds obvious, but you can just kite him away. And when the Lightning Storm goes away, you can stand in his face and blow him up. Or you can just keep kiting. That's fine as well. Um, Impervious Silver Amulet of Protection. Uh, don't really care. We will be getting a rare amulet relatively soon. And this is a really good offhand. So the one I got has Mystic, which is going to give me extra spirit. That's great. Whatever the one you get is, I guarantee you it's better than your Kaizog skull. So go ahead and chuck that on. The reason why is, and this is always here in this corpse. So there's the White Mire Rift. Run down there. Lightning Zombies here. This corpse will always have a Carver's Conjuring Bone. 
And when you attack things, so when you hit them, every time a damage over time thing ticks, for some damage over time, um, this has a chance to trigger. It'll summon a little wolf dog thing, which should come up fairly quickly, so I'll be able to show it. And that wolf dog thing, there he is, does this howl, puts a little uh, arrow here. This is like insert brain here kind of arrow. And that arrow gives you uh, total speed, which means you get casting speed, you get moving speed, you get, oh hey, Milton's here. Uh, casting speed, move speed, and attack speed. All three of which are things you want. Milton, you're going to want to kite. So when he charges you, wait for him to start swinging and then run away. That little thing where he throws the three stars at you, that'll slow you down. So try to dodge it if you can. And also, because he's a soldier, he has one of the soldier skills that's going to give him a heal and a decent chunk of regeneration when you get him down to like 30 odd percent. All right, uh, when he dies, go ahead and eat the lore note that he drops. Um, paper is delicious in Grim Dawn, so make sure you're getting your uh, your fill. And let's go ahead and check a few other things here. I don't, I don't think I care so much about this one. Make sure you do keep Milton's cask though. Uh, this helmet is really useful for Act One. It doesn't matter if you get Mighty of Ruin. Okay, the Ruin is the physical damage there. It's completely worthless for this build. The Mighty is 7% Physique, which, yeah, it's useful, but don't stress about the affixes, just keep it. Whichever one you get will be fine. Um, we want it because it comes with Aether Resistance and uh, damage to Aether Corruptions and Ethereals. I can never remember if it's extra damage to or less damage taken from. Either way, it's very useful, and you want to keep it for the Act Boss. After the act boss, you can throw it on the floor or sell it, doesn't matter. Alright, moving up the road here. We're going to start running into some cultists who we will re-encounter later in Act 3. Probably about the time we're going to start farming totems, so... We may be fully perditioned up by the time we see them again. Here's Negan the Withered. Um, this is the third of our colored zombies. He is a fire color, and you don't want to be in that red circle there. Let me let me stand in it, watch my health bar evaporate. That's actually not too bad. I feel like it's usually worse than that. Maybe that 10% fire res is helping. Whatever. Um, oh, you know what? That's what it is. It's, it's the fire damage combined with his friends. Okay, level 9. Subjugator's Ruined Bone of Annihilation. Not horrible, not great, uh, but level 9, another point in the bar. Go ahead and put more in Blood Burst. Okay. When you, uh, when you do summon him, if you summon him a little bit too far away, you actually won't get the Insert Brain here buff, so do make sure you're close to him when he spawns if you can. Okay, uh, just to the west of the Foggy Bank Rift is a whole bunch of Slith. Which means there's a very good chance that you can get your necklaces here. Again, you only need three. If you get more, great. But don't stress about it, you just need three. There's also a couple of Slith holes here. You can stack a whole bunch of damage over time on them. Okay, I've unfortunately still only got the two, so that's fine. Anyway, we're going into the cave here. This cave has our second Devotion Shrine in it, so we want to collect that. It also has a nice weapon that we can use for a little bit. Um, we will be going back for Puskul's tail in about another level, but for now... We can, uh, actually, let's get the weapon before I do this shrine. It's not going to make a huge difference either way, but this body right here will always have the slith tongue here. Now, I've got of blight on it, which is pretty good. Uh, also, anyone who's wondering how I get the colored affixes, like the yellow and green parts there, uh, this is the rainbow filter mod, which you can find on the crate forums. So, uh, slith tongue of, 
Slith Tongue of Blight here. Um, I know it says minus six damage per second if equipped. That's only for attacking things with your main attack. We don't hit things with our weapons, so we don't care about that. It has a proc on it, which maybe I can get it to trigger. If you see a random poison projectile come flying out of my character, it's from that weapon. There's my third necklace. There's my fourth necklace. Alright, we've also picked up what's probably going to be an upgrade. There we go. So that's got armor on it. You you definitely want to get armor. Um, Alright, now seems like a good time to do the armor chat. So, if you mouse over the armor rating here, there's three different numbers there for... Let's have a look at the head, okay? Now I have a helmet on. My helmet has 29 armor. And this says I have 47. So... Whenever you get attacked, you have a chance, in this case 15%, to be hit in the helmet, or the head. If you get hit in the head, by default, your armor will absorb 70%. This is a really dodgy way of explaining this, but basically what happens is any percent you have in armor absorption that is not 100 will go straight through your armor. So if you have 70% like I do, and you get hit for 100 damage, before the game even looks at your armor, you take 30 damage. So if you have a million damage, you can still only reduce 70% of an attack. Um, what this means is you want to get armor absorption, which we'll be doing later. But basically, 100% minus whatever your armor percentage is the percentage of physical attacks that go straight through your armor as if you're wearing nothing. So if you have a look at the shoulders there, I have a 15% chance when I'm attacked to get hit in the shoulders and have 0% armor absorption, which means 100% of that attack goes straight through my armor. If, however, I were to get hit in the head and it's that same 100 damage attack, 30 of it goes straight through my armor because I have only 70% absorption, and then 70 of that damage is then reduced as a flat amount by my armor rating of 47, which means I take 23 damage. Now, if I happen to have an item or several items that increase my armor absorption up to 100%, and I take that same 100 damage attack, and let's say I get hit in my chest, I'm going to take 26 damage because my chest has 74 armor. Now, if I had 200 armor and 100% absorption, and I got hit for 100 damage, well, I'd be reducing the 100 by 200, which means I would take literally zero damage. So armor is quite powerful if you have a lot of it, and the more you have, the stronger it gets, because there'll be more and more attacks that get reduced to zero. If you don't have a lot of armor, then uh, you're going to take a lot of damage. So that's, that's the reason why armor is so strong while you're leveling. It's strong later as well, but you have other options later. At low levels, you have armor and health, and that's it. Speaking of health, let's get a point in physique. And we didn't get a level up, however, we did get our devotions, and we're going to be starting on the rat. So we'll be getting some stats, we'll be getting some poison damage, um, and this is, I'll talk about that in a second, but poison damage, acid retaliation, we're getting some more stats, some resistances, and some more retaliation. And then more poison damage here. And do note that any kind of added damage you get like that can only be added to skills that have percent weapon damage on them. So you'll see here on Blood Burst we're adding 26% of our main hand damage. That means even though next point here we're doing 110 poison damage, we're only actually going to be adding 26% of that, which is going to be, what, like 28, 29 damage? So this looks really cool, but because this is such a low percentage of damage from your main hand, you're actually only getting a fraction of that damage. So keep that in mind. Any, any effects that trigger based on your weapon damage, so any flat damage you get, um, attack damage converted to health requires your weapon to actually hit the thing. So our little uh, eyeball grape thingies here, we've, we've stuck a... I don't know, a needle in them or whatever, we're actually stabbing things with them as well. Um, 
So we're getting a little bit of extra damage on our attack from that. But it's not as good as it sounds because the weapon damage percentage is quite low. Okay, to the west of the uh, cave we just came out of, which is again further west of the foggy bank, there is a little island you can go onto. And this little island will always, 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 always give you Isaac's Spalders. And Isaac's Spalders are a rare shoulder piece. And they always come with retaliation damage, and then you can get, you know, whatever other affix that happens to roll with. So this one here, Isaac's Stash. You're going to get Isaac's Spalders. I got Blood Letters, which is bleeding stuff. Doesn't do anything. You'll notice the bottom line there, 28 physical damage retaliation. So now anytime I get hit, whoever it is takes physical damage in exchange. Um, this is also one of the first pairs of shoulder armor that you can get. Um, I'm actually not going to wear these. I know this is a retaliation build, but it's actually not yet, so um, I'm not going to wear those. I am going to wear those pants, so I'll pick... Oh, level 10, okay. Uh, let's go ahead and move some stuff around. Assuming I can. There we go, that's starting to look a little bit better. Um, let's go chuck you over there, you over there. You know, a smarter man would... Um, actually, you know what, let's do that. Let's go back to town and sell this stuff. You do want to be picking up um, magic items for Act 1, because you need the iron bits to do crafting at the end. Now, this is something that I think I mentioned earlier, but just in case I didn't, this pair of shoulders has acid damage on it. It also has percent health, which is nice, but it has less armor. 6% acid and poison damage is not worth losing the armor for, so I am actually going to sell that, even though it has the damage type that this build is doing. Um, it's not worth the loss of armor. Uh, how are we doing for rings? This one has got energy regen, offensive ability. Yeah, it's not worth. Okay, and for the amulet. Amulet, don't stress about your amulet. We'll be getting a rare one fairly soon. Okay, and this should get me level 10. There we go. I just sold those pants that I was going to wear, so... Give me those back so I can wear them. Bet there's a few people in the comments already. You idiot, you sold the pants you were just talking about. Yes, I did. Okay, once we get to focus gaze, we are taking this immediately. This gives us a three and a half second skill recharge on Dreg's Evil Eye. Um, but it also gives us a ton of additional damage. Okay, so we throw that out, it does a big splash. One shot a ton of things. Most other things are going to die from the damage over time portion. But it means that we need to do something in between. And so we're going to start whacking things with our weapon. Um, let's go ahead and finish up to the foggy bank. And then we're going to go kill Pusquil. So the foggy... The foggy bank, not the foggy bank. Foggy bank is where we are. We want to go to the next rift gate. On our way through the foggy bank, the top half of the foggy bank, we want to come over here on the right, and we're checking for Luther Graves, who is not here. Um, so we'll keep going. Directly north is the second place, which is where my Luther Graves is. Yours may be down here. He may be just here where mine is. Um, wherever he is, make sure you find him, and make sure you send him don't take his money. This is your forever merchant in Act 1. You don't want him to dislike you. So just play nice, send him back to town. And uh, I can't remember if you get a discount, but I know it's definitely better to have him on your side than not. Okay. Um, and definitely do pick up any extra Slith necklaces you get. They are worth hanging on to. Um, if your guy's not here, you can head directly east from there. And just up here on the hill, right here, is where he will be. 
He only has three different spawning locations, so he's going to be in one of them. There we go. Right. Let's continue following the road, and that's one thing I do like about Grim Dawn, actually. If you ever get lost, find the road and follow it north, and you will almost always be going the right way. Okay, into the cave entrance. Here is our rift gate, and we will be going back at this point to the White Mire to turn in those necklaces. So if you don't have three of these by now, um, you've been incredibly unlucky. Go find some more blue slith to kill. Or just keep progressing the story. You'll eventually get three. Then you can come back to the White Mire, hug this wall, run up here, up this hill. There is a merchant here. And more importantly, there is Torvin, who is going to take the necklaces off your hand and give you the Slith Primal Ring. Now, this is a very good leveling ring. Um, by far the best ring you're going to get in Act 1. Maybe second best. And uh, this, will, this will actually be good enough to get you all the way to Elite, where you replace it with the same ring with bigger numbers. So, definitely do keep that ring. Okay, from there we're going to head back to... are we going to go back to Devil's Crossing? Yes we are, we've got some quests to turn in, and we have an amulet to go and collect as well. Uh, right, so thank you for the XP. Luther Greaves, as I said, is your forever merchant in Act 1. There will be a point in time later where Carrick here is no longer in this town, uh, so don't piss off Luther. It's not worth it. You'll get a couple of vine bits and it's and then you'll pay extra for everything. Okay, Sister's Amulet of Life Giving. If you don't have a good amulet by now, go ahead and chuck this on. This is a very good amulet for this level. The 10 health regenerated, 8% extra health, and a little bit of elemental resistance is all good stuff. They are minor bonuses, but they are good minor bonuses. Right. Now, the next thing we need to do is we need to go kill a certain scaly... Uh, how do we call him? I can't actually remember his name, but he lives over... Is it here? Foggy Bank. No, it's up here. He lives in this cave up here. So you go to the Foggy Bank here, and just run up just a little bit north. And assuming I've got the cave correct, which I think I have, just in here, you're going to find Primordian. That's his name. Or Primord, Primord something. It's Primordian, right? I'm going to kill him because he has an amulet we want. Now, later on, he's going to have this same amulet with plus one to all of our skills in Occultist, which we want. However, for right now, I believe you need to be level 18 to get the plus one to all skills. Here he is, Primordian, the Forgotten One. We just want to throw bombs at him and then run around, throw him another one. Make sure you dodge that. That big glowing red circle you saw above his head, that one, um, that's referred to as Sunder, and it basically means you're going to take extra damage if you get hit by whatever attack he's doing there. Uh, also... The meteors there, the ice meteors, you don't want to get hit by that. You definitely can, if you want, get in his face and keep hitting him in between. We will make the fight a little quicker. There we go, I've just been sundered, standing in a meteor shower. I got lucky with where the meteors were landing and didn't take a ton of extra damage. You definitely can take heaps of extra damage by getting sundered and then standing in meteor showers, so... Maybe don't do that. This is definitely one of the slower fights, and a lot of bosses early are going to be like this on Veteran. It's just how it is with this particular skill. I promise it gets better. There we go. Grab the first one that drops. Don't worry about affixes, we're going to have two other different amulets before we're done here. Uh, but basically, this is going to give you a bunch of poison damage stuff. Um, extra duration of Blood of Drig, okay. Didn't know that was there. But um, yeah, 
Good stuff for Blood of Greek. Decent amount of regen on mine. So mine came with Purging of Mending, which is basically regen and poison and acid resistance. Just grab whichever one you get. Um, if it turns out that this is actually not better that for you than the Sisters Amulet, just keep using this. Hang on to this though. We will be taking a point in Blood of Drig, and then we get all those bonuses. So making Blood of Drig last forever so you don't accidentally forget to use it is a good thing. And then we'll be converting Elemental and Aether to Acid, but do we even do Elemental or Aether? Maybe later down the line there might be some. I don't think so, though. Anyway, like I said, we won't be using this for long. Um, mostly be replacing that at level 18 with uh, the same thing, but it'll have plus one. Might be 32, actually, now that I'm thinking about it. Okay. So we've grabbed that. Let's go kill us a plus quill as well. So probably worth getting a point in Curse of Frailty uh, next time we level up. Because plus quill's weapon is going to give us some pretty nifty bonuses to that. We'll be getting resistance shredding of the poison flavor. So we definitely want to keep that. Okay, just here is the first place where plus quill's cave can spawn. He's got a couple different places where he lives. Um, that's the first one. The second one is going to be up here. Um, these guys still fighting? How about that? Second one's up here, and here it is. So this is where I've found mine. I believe there's another one over here. Um, maybe down here slightly. But um, yeah, we just want to go in. We want to kill Pascal. And like I said, you can line of sight his attacks. So we've got an extra hero here as well. You want to get a nice juicy group and then blow them all up in one go. There we are, there's level 11. I'm going to put one point in Curse of Frailty. I'm also going to put one point in Vulnerability. And then I'm going to put that on what, number 3. Put it wherever you like. Just um, make sure it's readily available. This has actually doesn't really make a big difference. This has got a lot more armor, so I'm going to put that on. And what do we got here? Decent amount of armor, some stats. I'll probably end up using this, even though it's not really great for this build. Um, and that has some regen on it. I am going to put another scavenge plating on here. Scavenge plating is something you want to hang on to, so... If you put it on a belt, keep the belt and take it off later. You will need a decent chunk of these for the crafting we're going to be doing. Um, these mutagenic eye cores as well. You can go ahead and... Is it them? Da, 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 da. Yeah, you could use these. So the, the poison acid damage percentage applies to Drig's Evil Eye and you'll get 26, 30%, whatever it happens to be, of that poison damage as well. So I'm going to chuck one of those on here. And again, I'm not going to throw these out because we need those for crafting. Alright, hopefully... Nope, I was going to say hopefully Pusquil's not coming with this little crowd, but uh, turns out he is. Let's just group these up and blow them to pieces with one hit. Alright, so this little rock here, this is the best place to hide from Pusquil. You can get it so as he will be kind of unable to hit you. And then I think I think it's along the top there. There is a, a place where you can hide where he won't be able to hit you, but you can still hit him. There's probably a couple places where you can do that. Whoop. And you just saw him. He wiped out a third of my health bar in one go. So just be careful of that. And we're going to whittle him down. Well, we've got plenty of damage, but this is the reason why I do it now, and I didn't want to do it earlier because he is much more dangerous at level, what, 6 or 7 whenever we got here. He's heaps more dangerous then than he is now. Don't get me wrong, he's still dangerous now, but he's a lot more dangerous at low levels. So then I missed out on the buff. That's fine, it is what it is. So you can hit him with the Curse of Frailty, then run out, hit him with... 
the uh, the dot, and down he goes. So he's going to drop a shield and a weapon every single time. Yeah, you know, Celestial Wrath is not great, but Poisoned is good. We are taking whatever drops first. Okay, we're not here to argue about um, the exact affixes on this. If you get poison stuff, great. If you get acid stuff, great. Don't stress about it, just take whatever drops first. Um, you'll notice here it adds minus 10 poison and acid resistance to Curse of Frailty. It also has plus 3 levels to vulnerability. So that's this one here. So where before this had 3%, I think. Yeah, minus 3% poison and acid resistance. It's now up to minus 12 and we have an additional minus 10. So we've gone from 3% to 22% just from putting this on. So this is going to be our weapon for the foreseeable future. Um, go ahead and check the shield, but I don't think so. No. And we'll keep this one. I am going to put a mutagenic icor on here. And again, you want to hang on to these. We'll be crafting virulent weapons later on. Alright, let's head back to town here. And we're going to go do the underground section now. So, um, inventory is kind of full-ish. Make sure you're hanging on to... Um, actually, this belt isn't horrible. Yeah, toss that. Make sure you're hanging on to any items you have put components onto. And, uh, and sell everything else. You won't be needing it. Also, I have got 10 scrap now, so I need 5, I think? 5 or 6 for Barnabas. So he's going to take his share. Make sure you accept the quest from him. It was 5. Uh, we need 6 in order to repair the bridge over here. And we want to do that before we start any crafting at the end of Act 1. Or otherwise you'll do like I've done in the past, have a really beautiful character full of components that you crafted and you can't get across the bridge because you can't fix it. So just be aware of that. Make sure you repair the bridge before you spend all your, um, all your scrap on crafting components that are nice to have but not necessarily required. Alright, I don't normally come this way but... Um, there's this really cool hole in the wall here, which if you spin the camera you can see it much more clearly, but um, you don't need to spin it in order to knock the wall down. And then you get a few nice hidden spoils here. Hidden spoils chests generally are going to give you two rares. They can drop blue items, uh, but it will be kind of rare to see those. Okay, again, we're ignoring acid and poison damage percentage on anything that isn't weapon or offhand. We're just looking at armor, so this is lower, but this has a lot of health. So this could be worth using. However, we'll be putting this on very, very soon, so I'm not going to bother for now. So we're going to make our way through here. There'll be a bunch of spiders downstairs. We're going to kill all of those. Uh, missed out on the buff again. That buff is really useful, mostly for the uh, the run speed at this point. So we run through here. Either kill the spiders or don't. It doesn't really matter. You can just run past them down into the wooden door. You can kill them all as well if you prefer. If you want to get extra XP, that's fine. Uh, these particular spiders, apparently this one can root you in place. There we go, take care of them. I'm not too worried about stragglers, there's going to be plenty of XP for us. So let's just keep going. Also not going to bother with uh, vulnerability or curse of frailty on most of these. Anything with a star above its head or a skull, absolutely. You want to uh, curse them before you throw the... Uh, the needle filled grape eyeball thing at them. But for just regular monsters, you're going to kill them in one hit, so don't stress about it. Biggest uh, issue you're going to have killing normal trash monsters is rounding them up into a big enough pack to make it feel like it's worth casting a spell on. That was kind of worth it. 
Alright, I'm gonna get the buff this time. Uh, also, you definitely can just hit things with the stick. You're not gonna have amazing damage with it, but it gives you something to do in between. Nice little filler there. Alright, so here is Veloth, the Corruptor. Now, Veloth has a ring that's kind of okay. And you could farm her if you wanted to. Uh, you could come back later on, kill her again, and get a second ring. It will give you some more poison stuff. Um, however, I'm just going to get the one and then be on my way. So let's actually do what I said you should do and, and throw the curse before you throw the eyeball. There you go. And she's also doing the uh, the Sunder attack that the um, Primordian was doing as well. That blue wave. I'm actually... Let me see. Yeah, she's still fairly healthy. Let me get hit by the next one and I'll show you what it does. Okay, space bar to pause. You can't do this if you hit escape, but you can mouse over these. So I'm taking poison damage for three seconds. That's 12 damage. It's, it's nothing. And then I'm Sundered, which means I take 30% more damage for the next three seconds. So in her case, um, I think Veloth's her. Anyway, in Veloth's case, doesn't really do a huge amount of damage in the next three seconds. At worst, you're going to get hit by one poison attack. So not a big deal. But get used to dodging um, Sundering attacks because... 30% more of a very small number is not very much. 30% more of half your health bar is a big deal later on, so just get used to dodging them. Also, I should be using the curse more. I just don't have the muscle memory for it yet. That's all right, we'll pick that up. And like I said, try to dodge everything. You can just stand in her face and whack away and then use evade to dodge away from that one and that'll be fine as well you're not going to take huge amounts of damage from it there we go so we've got purging of protection which actually is a pretty good ring so i am actually going to use that um, i'm going to use that instead of this one again i'm going to hang on to it um polished emeralds are not super fancy but i don't have another one so I do kind of want that one back, and we will use them for crafting, so definitely hang on to things you've put components on. We'll be able to take that back later. Alright, here is our third Devotion Shrine. Okay, let's check those two rares. Uh, this is less armor, and I don't care about the other stats on it, so no. This is a lot less armor, so again, no. Um, that is... Slightly more armor, but otherwise much worse, so I'm going to leave that one as well. Um, next devotion point, into the rat again. We just picked up all that poison damage. Another thing you can do here is ignore Veloth, grab your devotion point, spend it, and then kill Veloth. Uh, that would have made that fight a little bit quicker, actually. Okay, uh, this seems like a good place to stop for Act 1. Um, we will come back next episode and finish the act, but for now, that'll be the end of this episode. So thank you all very much for watching. I'll see you in the next one and goodbye for now.